Super Bowl 55 is one for the books. This is the Focus Group. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Listen. Bueller. 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 Laugh. <laughs> and learn. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. This is the Focus Group with Tim Bennett. S T A U N C H. And John Nash. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. We're all business. Except when we're not. Welcome to the Focus Group. John Nash here with my good friend and co-host, Tim Bennett. Focusgroupradio.com is the website that you will go to to learn more about us and also our Tuesday podcast, TFG Unbuttoned. 20 minutes, three stories. You're in and out pretty quick. It's a little different than what we do here on the Focus Group. So again, that's focusgroupradio.com. Super Bowl 55, done. In the books. And uh, we are going to talk about our favorite ads, what we thought of the broader um, Super Bowl on the second half of the show. That's going to be about 22 minutes in if you're on YouTube and you want to just scroll ahead to that point and see what uh, our thoughts are on advertising. I'll say in general, it just didn't... I I guess this is just an overall thing. I don't know if you had the same reaction, but we just felt it, it just didn't... Something was off, and and we know what's off. We're we're throwing a Super Bowl in the middle of the event. Um, is that? Do you think that might have been it, or? You know, that's part of it. There's also, I think, if you're not, uh, we're in the Northeast, and so neither of us had a horse in the game. True, very um, true. Which which I think so the the local media doesn't hype it up as much. Although, I was uh, I know a lot of people don't like Tom Brady, uh, former New England Patriot uh, quarterback, but he really proved himself. He and Gronkowski. Uh, by going out there and going down to Tampa Bay and um, and pulling it off and and winning the game. And so whether you like him or not, it's similar to Tiger Woods or some of the other people who just dominate in their particular sport. Um, say what you want about him, but um, he he a game that was supposed to be pretty close was not close at all. No, and, and so. here's how uninformed I was. When I saw Gronkowski on the field, I, I, I had this double, I, I thought, wait a minute, the last time I read about him, he had retired, happily retired, right. and he was at last year's Super Bowl talking about how he was going to do this and this, but he wasn't playing, and suddenly he's on the field with Tom Brady, and I guess that was, a lot of the sports uh, commentators said that was part of the success for Brady, was having was knowing that he could have Gronkowski on the field, is that is that what the analysis was on your end? Yeah, and and you know they were they had played together for years in New England, and uh, you know they were they they knew each other and um, were teammates, and so yeah, you know you get into a rhythm with somebody, no different than if you're a basketball player and you had had somebody that uh, you worked well with together. But you know I I, I enjoyed the game from that aspect of it, but uh, I was rooting for the Chiefs initially. I um, Same for here. some reason Kansas I just City thought the Chiefs. Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs. I, I was uh, I was rooting for them, but. I uh, I enjoyed the game. I liked the uh, as you said. We're going to talk about it uh, later on in shop talk uh, after the break. But I there were some commercials I liked. Some I scratched my head at, which we do every year. And I think our friend Mike Wilkie did a did the top five LGBT commercials of all time. I think that you had provided a list for. Us, so uh, yeah, yeah, we'll share those as well and see what we think of those. And then I picked I picked some that I liked. I used the USA Today ad meter, which I always seem to use. So I use that to decide which ones I liked and. Um, my uh, my top were not necessarily what I guess America felt were the top ones, so we'll see what happens. Well, I saw on um, CBS this morning, uh, Tony DeCopola and uh, Gail King spoke extensively about, um, and they had the woman on who ran the USA, uh, the people meter, is it the people meter or the ad meter? Um, also, I, I would say that the 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 background of that, of how they capture that data is a little suspect, if you know what I mean. I mean, you could go on and just say, I love this ad, but it's not like yeah. there's a control group. <laughs> that's, well, it's all subjective, know, right? I mean, yeah, there's, it's just yeah. all very subjective. So we, we used to, back in the day when we were on SiriusXM, we did our own our own uh, ad meter, I guess, with uh, with the SiriusXM listener, which, you know, sometimes would mirror what the general population thought, but there was always some slight differences, which uh, which you would expect. But uh, I think overall that uh, there was certainly not the hype uh, that Super Bowl usually gets. And I think you and I had uh, I think that's the overall consensus where you were going, that there just wasn't the excitement and hype that uh, that we not usually even, find. With not the, even in the ad. In, yeah, like not even in the ad is not even the ad industry. I mean, you and I read the trades and I saw a number of articles about the early ads and a couple things, but I didn't really 
there wasn't the buzz that there used to be back in no. the day. I mean, Stuart Elliott used to live <laughs> blog on the New York Times. You know, they just they used to not release the ads before the Super Bowl, so you you would actually have this kind of anticipatory thing of hey, we're going to get to see the ads when they come up. Um, and oddly, when you bring up Sirius, you know, when you and I were back on the the network, we would never we were not allowed to say the word Super Bowl. Remember that? Yeah, why was that? There was something, there was some rights, they were so worried about like pissing the NFL off or something. It reminds me of the event. We call it the event because we have to for YouTube and a few other reasons, but you know, <laughs> I remember you well, and There I was were... an NFL channel, I guess, over on Sirius XM That's too. right, that's right. And they would send all these Yahoo, Yahoos down there. And you, you and I were the only business show on Sirius XM. And by the way, we gave them the idea for the Warren channel that they totally stole <laughs> Scott Greenstein because I actually have the proposal that we did three years earlier, right, John? Mm-hmm. You know, and I went over there to talk to the Wharton Dean. Anyway. So we were the only business show, and you would have thought they would have sent us to go down to the Super Bowl to have done the shows. No, they would send people that knew nothing about anything yeah. down there to do the show. But uh, anyway, you know, I, I had Sirius on the other day. I had to turn it off. It uh, I, I tried to flip around to find something. There's a, still a few channels, but uh, boy, oh boy, it, it, it's turned into, I don't know. I, I think some of the talk stuff is, um, it's very... Um, Bravo centric, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the word. I don't know mm-hmm. what the right word is. Hey, I was working on some uh, project for you and me, and uh, I was looking at the uh, some pictures, and there was a picture of us in. You were in the passenger seat. I was in the driver's seat, and Bob had taken the picture of us, and he was in the back of the car. And on the entertainment system is Radio Andy. Yeah, we must have been. It was one of our road trips. We were listening to Radio Andy, and it probably because given the time of day, it was probably when Sandra Bernhard had her show. Ooh. Was that Sandyland? Yeah, it just started, remember? Yeah, well, that was one of the ones that you would say to me, well, this this has got, you know, this is funny. You could at least, she, she did a good job. But um, yeah, I agree with you on music is limited for me to maybe four stations. Then we have uh, the BBC, NPR, and MSNBC. And that's for the car, unless I'm listening to a podcast. So yeah, it, you know, it's like television. Millions of channels, but we're only going to be listening to a couple of them, right? Well, I'm curious as to see what happens with media overall, particularly with cars, because the for a long car. time, yeah, you know, for a long time, whether it was Sirius or XM, and, and then when they merged, but they were, they really had a monopoly on this this uh, the service within the car. But now, with streaming and and uh, all the other ways you can can uh, ascertain media, I'm I'm curious to see what happens with uh, with all of these services. And the same thing with television. I I have more friends. I know a lot of people tried to cut the cord. <laughs> With cable systems, and they went back just because they didn't want to have 15 yeah. remotes. Yeah, and then the cable systems have all raised the price because you do need wi- Wi-Fi or you do need, you know, service into the house. But I have some friends that just did it again, and um, they're not going back. And um, it's actually worked quite well. They have these TVs now that are wireless TVs that mm-hmm. are just picking up, and um, they're using Hulu and Amazon and and uh, Netflix and uh, able to get local local news and programming, but they're very satisfied because how many times have you flipped through and seen nothing? You, you, uh, uh, and I don't want to, I don't think I need to pay for music. It's you know, every day. Some of these, right. The, the sports package, I get a sports fee. I get all these things. I don't know why they don't just have you pay for what you watch. Uh, it's a, you know, I would love to just do a bundle like that. Like where you pick your, your 10 channels, you're done. Right. Anyway, uh, moving along here. Let's see. What caught your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. So, Mr. Bennett, what caught your eye today? Well, this one, you know, I don't know this guy, but for whatever reason, this had popped up. I was flipping around on a on a uh, a news feed, and the headline is, "I prayed away the curse of mildew." <laughs> and so, this is uh, a televangelist. His name his name is uh, I believe it's Andrew Womack. And he had said that he and his wife, so there's a YouTube clip, which I will post to our Facebook page, which is uh, Focus Group Radio. And I'll post the clip there. It's just 45 minutes long. But so this this tele, televangelist, he's out looking for money, of course, as they all do. He said when he and his wife first got married, they were poor and they lived in a house that wasn't insulated. So he said that, um, and he has, a, he, has a, he has a method to his madness here. So he said that... Uh, They had a gas heater and they were inside the place and it would warm up. And because there was no insulation, the walls would sweat. And then in the dark areas of the house, there would be mildew everywhere. So he didn't know what to do and he didn't want to clean it. So he ended up taking out his Bible or whatever and went to Deuteronomy 28 and read 
uh, read to the mildew and told the mildew it had cursed the mildew, told the mildew it was a curse. Leave this house. So then he went to the Galatians 3.13 and then redeemed, redeemed uh, he said, I'm redeemed from you. I'm redeemed from you. He spoke to the mildew and cursed it again. And uh, sure enough, it went away. So the mildew all went away. And I uh, didn't have to clean, didn't have to do anything. Just the next day, the mildew was gone. So he, In one day? He, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he said that mildew is a curse, and he was able to rebuke it, of course. And um, so he's decided that he can do the same thing, of course, with the virus. Oh, boy. Okay. So he said Je Jesus could turn it off. He could turn off the receptor. So he's decided to do this. So he held a um, an illegal Bible conference. Of course, 22 people came down with cases of the virus. And um, so he hasn't figured out quite yet how they're going to do it, but he does know that he's going to be able to, like he did with the mildew, he's going to be able to handle the uh, the virus similar to the way he's handled this mildew issue that he had when he was younger with his wife. So um, I just thought if you're interested and you're afraid of getting the shot or getting vaccinated, you can contact Andrew Womack, probably through the YouTube, or give him a call. I'm sure he'll take your money for a donation. And if you have a mildew issue or a mold issue, and you could probably throw in for an extra ten bucks, you'll probably also be cured of of any any sort of viruses a or ailments. <laughs> an egg nail. <laughs> wow! Can you imagine. Uh, you and I come across some funny things, right? And and I, I'm not going to poo poo it, but I, you know, I, mold and mildew is kind of something that just doesn't vanish overnight. And you know, a lot of there are big businesses that are. Specializing in remediation, right? And you know, <laughs> well, the church was—you know—the church was packed. You yeah. know, the church is packed with people, and that's what I never understand about these things. You know, the church is packed with people; they're all listening, hundreds, hundreds of people, and they're listening to him go on and on about this, and they—they they obviously believe it. Yeah, I, they so do I, believe I, it. I find I find part of it somewhat fascinating. I don't know. Can you hear him? Can I hear him? Can you hear him talking? No. I don't know if you can't. Oh, okay. So I, I, I was thought maybe you could hear him. I was playing the video. I'll put it on our Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, put that on the, it. yeah. Just because I think you'll just you'll just shake your head. I'm shaking it now. So, <laughs> so, so what caught your eye? All right. Um, first one comes to us from our listener, Chris, who sent this to our letters at focusgroupradio.com. We'd love to hear from you about um, business birthday suggestions or what caught your eye. Frankly, anything, just drop us a line at letters at focusgroupradio.com. So Chris sends this uh, piece that came out of Chicago. The headline, this is a quick one, the, and I have a second one. The first one is, man arrives at O'Hare with 3,200 generic Viag Viagra pills for his friends, Customs says. <laughs> a traveler tried to illegally pass through Customs at O'Hare International Airport with 3,200 erectile dysfunction tablets he said were for his friends. The nine pounds of pills worth nearly 100,000 were a generic Viagra brand sold over the counter in India, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Custom agents seized the pills Thursday on the man's return from India. When the traveler was asked why he had the pills, he simply said, they're for friends. <laughs> as a rule. Is that, a, is that illegal, though? Uh, yeah. As a rule, the FDA does not allow travelers to bring prescription drugs from outside the United States into the U.S., because they often contain dangerous contaminants or ineffective compounds. Um, so that was the first one. Did it, so thank you, Chris. I just, I mentioned it to Bob and Bob goes, what's it, what is, that's a lot of friends. <laughs> well, I was going to say 3,200 pills too. I'm wondering how heavy that would be. A, nine pounds. And how, how big that case would be. That's a lot of pills. So it's a nine pound bag of pills. I, I, he, I, I guess he was pushing that car along and thinking, I'm just going to get through, I'm going to get through. And then suddenly someone goes, sir, could you please come over here? What are these? Oh, it's for my friends. Because if you divide 3,200 by, let's say he had 10 friends. I mean, they're doing a lot of Viagra. Um, the other one here is a quick one. And that is that, um, let's go here. And actually, this is news to me. Party Like It's 1925 on Public Domain Day. I did not know this, but... Um, on January 1st of every year, a new batch of published works is liberated from the constraints of copyright. This year, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's um, The Great Gatsby, Virginia works by Virginia Woolf, Sinclair Lewis, Franz Kafka, Gertrude Stein, and Agatha Christie all became eligible to be used any way you please. There's no more, you're not going to get sued, you know. So they, they, they're out of copyright and they're in the public domain. And just a few here are the books where The Great Gatsby, Mrs. Dalloway. Do you remember reading Mrs. Dalloway in high school at all, Virginia Woolf? 
I, I, I do, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised by this. How could, how, so the great Gatsby is off. It's now, like you, it is now public domain. Yeah. So you could do whatever you wanted with it. Mm hmm. You could. Yeah. And, and now, so that's a couple of books, wow. films. I have a picture up here of Harold Lloyd in a famous silent film called the freshman, another famous silent film called the Merry widow. There's Stella Dallas, but Buster Keaton goes West and music, I picked a couple here. Uh, Jelly Roll Morton as one of the, the 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 jazz pianist I have up on the screen right now, and then there's select works by Duke Ellington are also now free and clear to be used in the public domain. And so, what did the woman who reported on this says? Um, let's see here. On da, 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 da. it's difficult to overstate the importance of having work in the public domain. For example, can you imagine the holidays without "It's a Wonderful Life"? You know how many broadcast networks show that? Well, that's right. public domain. It also means that books can be published more cheaply and made available for free. Um, and now you can use quotes and texts and things like that and build upon stuff. So I just thought public, you know, this copyright thing was kind of fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised by that. So I was wondering. Yeah, I, I didn't know if, because there's certain things where you and I have tried to use them in the estates or somebody says you can't do can't that. Do it, right. Joan Crawford estate or somebody owns it. So will those things eventually go off as well, you think? Yes, eventually they do, unless there's an active estate that is constantly renewing the copyright. Uh, there are some books that are still in copyright that technically should have not been or, or would have lapsed had there not been a very vibrant legal establishment making sure they stayed in copyright so it's wow it's, it's i thought it was interesting especially the great gatsby it's one of my favorite books yeah, that by one the way shocks me. that one shocks me i would have thought that would have been pretty protected yeah i i read gatsby at least once every 16 months 14 or 16 months it's a quick read and i really always find something that makes me laugh in it so there you go all right as uh, many of you know Deep Discount is a partner of ours here on the Focus Group, and we would like you to shop their site by going to ours, focusgroupradio.com, and clicking on the Deep Discount logo. So uh, this week, the sale is 70s cinema and TV spotlight, but basically it's 50-year-old films and TV shows. I mean, I had to put it that way <laughs> because, you know, the 70s were 50 years ago. Oh, my... So, in the nature of that, and the spirit of that, Tim, what was your uh, what was your find this week? Yeah. So, when you put it that way, and I was shocked because as I was looking through, I thought, "Oh, I remember that. I remember that." And then when you say it's fifty, and then what I picked, <laughs> I remember watching this as a kid, and I thought, "Oh my God, it was fifty years ago." So I had picked, and I thought maybe you and I might have overlapped here, but I picked. I got you, babe, the best of Sonny and Cher, and uh, comes out it uh, was in a DVD format. And it was released last year and uh, in February in 2020. And so it took all of these. So for four years, Sonny and Cher, it was launched in August uh, 1st, 1971, the Variety Show. And they've taken the best of Sonny and Cher and put it on a five DVD um, DVD set. And it has all different types of, of stars from Dinah Shore to Carol O'Connor, uh, Jim Neighbors, Jimmy Durante, Art Carney, Jerry Lewis. The Supremes, um, Frankie Avalon, Righteous Brothers, Joe Namath, all different types of people that were on there, plus the skits. And you and I have bemoaned, or you and I have lamented, maybe. Lamented is the, the perfect word. word. We, we've lamented the sad decline of variety television, uh -huh. right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I often wonder why it just never... Never caught like, on again. There were variety shows, whether it was Donny Osmond and Donnie Marie or some of these other shows, but... Variety shows just seem to have disappeared. I know Rosie O'Donnell tried to bring them back, and they just it was an utter failure. But I, I don't know why variety shows just disappeared. Maybe people just don't aren't actors like that anymore. The we whole just don't. TV's just changed in general. It's just yeah. it's really changed in general. But I I'm glad you picked this one because Sonny and Cher was a, a favorite destination for us when we were growing up, and I still think some of that stuff and some of the stars were great. So I, uh, for under thirty bucks, you can pick it up. Pick it's it up. Seven sixty four at deep discount. So I picked uh, a movie called Wings. It's a uh, famous, famous film from the silent film era, and um, a th thrilling aerial combat scenes directed by William Wellman. Silent World War One saga. A lot of the aerial combat scenes are so well done and so known that uh, George Lucas actually used them for some of the as reference for when they were constructing some of the battle sequences in Star Wars with the X-wing fighters and the Tie fighters. Um, the film was shot on location for a budget of two million, 
uh, this of course back in the day in 20 um, you know 1927 which would be about 28 million nowadays hundreds of extras in World War one pilots were actually used in the filming of this and um, it's now part of the film registry of the National Library of Congress but it was a uh, Clara Bow starred in this by the way um, but it was a, a big big hit when it came out this is one of the big silent films so I highly recommend wow. it. It's um, an interesting watch, actually, and um, it's it's one of those things where it's it's film history, right? And when you see some of the aerial combat scenes, you'll know why. So wings, uh, wings on DVD. And what is our new release this week? I think it is Billy. Now you love Billy Holiday, right? Yeah. So it's uh, so it's it's Billy Holiday, and it's uh, it's released this week on uh, at deep discount. And it's about um, so if you're a jazz lover or somebody who just loves um, Billy Holiday. It's a doc- documentary that was um, started, I believe, in 2019. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, many of the interviews are featured here, conducted by a, uh, a Linda Cool, who is a journalist who was who set out to write the definitive Billy Holiday biogra- biography, but died under mysterious circumstances before it was completed. And I wondered about that because Billy Holiday always had this sense of mystery around her anyway and about how she lived her life. And so I thought this is just another one of these mysterious things around Billie Holiday and about her life. And um, so a lot of people have been waiting for this and anticipating its release. So uh, you can pick it up at deep discount. And it's uh, the list price is around $20, but you'll be able to get it for twelve ninety nine in DVD at deep discount. Do you like the Billie Holiday music? Do you have? I do. I do. And I'm, I'm very it? interested in this particular documentary because of who's involved in it and, and what they're going to discuss. So I never, I never say no to a, a music biopic um, because these songs and these artists are like, wow, they're like with us for a long time, <laughs> forever, frankly. Yeah. yeah so, so um, be sure to head over to focusgroupradio.com while you're there, click on the deep discount logo They've, uh, they're a big supporter of us here in the focus group, and we'd like you to support them. While you're there, it's the 50th anniversary sale, if you can believe it. I picked I Got You, Babe, the best of Sonny and Cher, and uh, you can get that for $27.64. John picked Wings, which is, is a silent movie that uh, he recommends with some great footage. And uh, the release, new release this week is Billy, and you'll be able to pick that up also at deep discount. And um, you'd be sure to own your passion when you're over there. So again, thanks to our friends at Deep Discount. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, as John had promised, we're going to discuss the Super Bowl during our Shop Talk segment. And then we've moved our business birthday to the end of the show. So stay with us. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Focus Group with Tim and John. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. The Focus Group, an entertaining look at the outside of business. For your convenience, listen anytime, anywhere, any way, anyhow, and on anything. Got it? Head over to focusgroupradio.com and pick your poison. We're all business, except when we're not. All right. Welcome back to the Focus Group. John Nash with Tim Bennett. Focusgroupradio.com is really all you need to know. Go there and make sure you check out TFG Unbuttoned, our 20-minute complimentary or companion podcast to the Focus Group, the main event. <laughs> it's like when I remember I said one time, that's where we warehouse our media. We warehouse Which I like that housed. Housed, housed, housed our media is over there. Uh, so Tim's, as Tim said before break, and as I teased at the beginning of the show, uh, we of course have been Super Bowl fans for a number of years. Not necessarily the actual gameplay or the teams, but because we're both from advertising and marketing backgrounds, Super Bowl used to represent and still does an enormous investment in um, commercial time and production and and brands. Uh, this year's Super Bowl featured some brands that we've never seen before at the Super Bowl and some that were uh, noticeably absent. Um, I will say that the lack first, since Tim and I come from the auto industry primarily, I was sort of surprised that I, is it my imagination or the number of car ads was a little bit lower? Oh, it was very much lower. I mean, I think at, uh, at its height, there was probably, oh gosh, probably 12 or 14, 15 auto brands that would usually be in the Super Bowl. And I think this year, I counted only two. 
Yeah, uh, actually, uh, GM, General Motors, mm-hmm. General Motors, and uh, and Jeep, and Jeep. Yeah, with Bruce Springsteen. And in fact, both those spots, I had I, maybe we could kick off starting about that. But even before that, I'll say this: uh, it, Tim and I feel that um, this game just felt different. And I, I know it's the event, and there are cardboard people in the stadiums. And if you happen to watch uh, CBS this morning on Sunday, they actually profiled how they do the crowd sounds. The, the, you know how they artificially lay that in now to kind of make the game more exciting to the television viewer. Um, it just something just I it's it was off and for me it, and and you smartly said earlier in the show that it was probably because we didn't have any skin in the game because we're here in the Northeast and these teams are not playing in our area or they're not our homegrown teams, but also um, from the very get go the advertising felt to me like it fell into two camps. We're going to ignore what's going on and make people feel happy and rely on nostalgia, or we're going to kind of address it. And I don't know that anybody really hit the mark correctly. Um, and I'm sure, and there are, and there's a lot of nostalgia, by the way, I said to Bob at one point, our reliance on celebrity has gotten to be crazy. I mean, it's, right. it's and, and, and if you don't know some of these people, the message just goes right over your head, right? You're lost. And I, yeah, and I found myself lost a bit. And actually there were three, I can't believe one of my favorite ads was a Toyota ad. So there was, so there were three car companies as I can remember. But, um, I don't know how you want to do this, whether you want me to tell you what my five favorite ads were and why, or you, how, how do you want me to, uh, to discuss this? Or I had some, what I called my head scratching ads. I didn't quite understand why they were there or, um, I, I picked five ads that I really liked and why I I'm, liked them. I'm surprised you even got five. <clears throat> I only have two. <laughs> I only have. You want me to want me to tell you why I picked them? I yeah. Want me to, to share my five? Yeah. So, and and what I'll do is, John and I both use the USA Today ad meter, and I'll tell you what. Um, what their ranking? I'll give was. you my five in order, and then I'll tell you though where they fell in in the scheme of the uh, excellent, the ad meter. excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> so my first one that I liked was Jeep, which was the reunited States of America with Bruce Springsteen. Liked it too. It wasn't on my list, but I liked it. I thought it was smart and well done. Yeah, I liked it a lot. It came in number 12, which I was shocked about on the ad meter. I thought it might be number one or up there. It's gotten an awful lot of uh, talk and buzz. It featured Bruce Springsteen, who actually went out and did. He insisted on going out and doing the ad in Kansas. Um, It was about some people complained and thought maybe it was um, a political ad. But essentially, he was talking about common ground and the fact that we need to as a country, um, get back to being more alike than unalike. Kind of the message you and I had heard you many years ago from Maya Angelou. What I felt interesting, I read recently about, um, they only decided to do the ad about six days ago before the Super Bowl. I read that too. He's never done yeah. an ad before either. He, he's never done a spot, right? He, like they had right. to really... And the, uh, the the head of marketing at uh, Stellantis, or what was you know Jeep and Chrysler, are part of the holding company now, for ten years has gone back and forth trying to get him to do something in a very soft sell, and they'd sent him this script, and um, he de- literally decided Springsteen and his and his uh, agent, um, they thought it was almost like a prayer the way it was written, and he decided to do it and uh, did not use one of his songs, had didn't, done a score to it, and. Uh, so it had filmed, and I thought it was done right, and actually used his actual Jeep, which was uh, like a 20-year-old Jeep. So I, I like that out a lot. Um, but there were, some people were critical of it and thought it was was pandering to patriotism or whatever. The, the second spot I liked, which, um, and some other people had mentioned liked it too, which came in number five on the meter with uh, USA Today, was a Toyota spot called Upstream about the girl who was adopted uh, with the uh, legs that were amputated, the, the entire paralyzed. thing kind of takes place in water. Yeah, because she's constantly swimming, and it's she's either a teen or a young girl, and they she go and and in the background you hear like a voiceover say, "We found a child for you to adopt, uh, but we want to let you know that her life is going to be difficult because she has a uh, congenital birth defect that requires her right. legs to be amputated." Very inspiring. I liked it. I, I liked it. I didn't put on my top five, but I thought that's inspirational. And I thought what it was inter- I thought was interesting about it is Toyota chose to show who they were as a company there beyond their vehicles, right? It yeah. showed who they were, were beyond that. The one I thought was hilarious was uh, the Bud Seltzer Lemonade. And one of my top they two. talked about 2020, <clears throat> giving them lemons, and there were lemons <laughs> falling everywhere, which I just thought was funny. They just totally poked fun of 2020. And um, did this lemonade seltzer thing, which 
was my third favorite ad. Came in number 10 on the ad meter. That's my the second surprise, favorite, by the way. Was it? The yes. surprise for me was Fiverr, which came in number 43. Came in 43? I've heard from a bunch of people today that they love the Fiverr ad. And a lot of- I they, love they, the Fiverr ad. Yeah. It was, it was, did you see it? With I the, did. Um, mm -hmm. The lot four the seasons. Four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> by the way we're not a hotel yeah yeah and then number five we had posted this one uh, earlier on our um on our facebook page and we'll post we'll post some of these ads over at focus group radio on our facebook page was the anheuser-busch ad which was let's grab a beer and again it was more of a hopeful message of saying that you know it never really was about the beer it was about spending time with friends and we can't wait to look forward to gathering again as friends and whether you're just getting people to come over the house or you're doing something after work or whatever it was, you know, we said, let's grab a beer, but it really was about being with people. And that came in number 15 on the ad meter. So those were, those were the five that I thought stood out for me that I liked. So All right. What, so what were the ones that you liked? Toyota was on my top five list. Um, <laughs> the lemonade lemons, lemonade from lemons. One of my favorite parts of that spot was when there's a couple getting married and they're under a table and all the lemons are just, like <laughs> pounding down and and she just starts screaming and crying and and the actress that did that i think that was well cast well acted well directed and you you just got the sense of oh my god what's going to happen next um an ad that really for some reason i kept looking at and went back to and read about it actually is uh was done by jimmy johns um and it was for you know deli meat now where did yep. jimmy johns rank on the the people meter or the usa scale um, let's see. I do actually have it up here. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. I can, uh, let's see. Jimmy Johns, Jimmy Johns. So surprisingly, um, you know, the number one and two were Rocket Mortgage, which uh, neither of us. With, uh, tr uh, uh Tracy Morgan, right? <clears throat> yeah, which I didn't particularly care well, for either of Well, there were moments of each of them that I thought were very funny. You know, like, uh, close enough. You know, that the whole thing between guaranteed or close enough, and they, they thought they, they really did a good job of that, but... Anyway, so um, Jimmy John's, as Tim looks for where this is, is uh, they're like a cold cut sandwich thing, and um, they use it came, in, it came in 34. 34. They used Brad Garrett. You may remember Brad Garrett from Everybody Loves Raymond, tall guy, and he plays uh, what was his character again? Uh, he's Bologniaville or something, and he plays this meat captain or this owner of this chain. Oh, he's a uh, Bolonovich. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he basically talks about how um, he was knocking Subway and a bunch of other stuff like they use fresh stuff. We got our own turkey in hand yep. and, and it's scientific and someone holds up a brick of like gelatin and they, they start putting it towards him. He goes, no, I'm good. <laughs> he doesn't have to have the ham. But this spot actually was shot as a local ad. And when they saw how it was coming out, they decided to actually up it to be a Super Bowl spot. So it was, it was, a, wow. what I liked about this was this was going to be for the franchises and for, um, you know, a local ad buy. There will be more of this character that you're going to see more of, uh, the Bolognavich guy as played by, um, uh, Brad Garrett. Um, but that's why I was attracted to it. I mean, I thought it was really funny. It was one of the rare ones that made me laugh out loud spontaneously. Like, this is hysterical. They're creating this character and this meat empire, the whole bit. I loved the way they did the the fresh versus the scientific gelatinous stuff. And then when I read that this was originally a local ad, the agency elevated it to management at Jimmy John's and said, hey, and they all realized they had something that was going to be kind of fun and different. Then they bought the 5.5 million 30 second spot on the Super Bowl. <laughs> You know, I did like that spot too. I thought it was very kind of, you know, North Jersey. Oh, totally. You know, totally. It yeah, was almost it was mafiosa, bo borderline Sopranos. Sort of it was like it was yeah. like some kind of weird nod of the Sopranos. Yeah. Um, so we liked that. We liked Fiverr. We liked lemons from lemon um lemonade from lemons. Um the Toyota spot with the woman, the girl that swam. A spot that we noted, I I didn't put on my list of favorites, but I will tell you this. God did they spend the money. The Edward Scissor Hands reboot, which was for the GM. The Cadillac. The, uh, Cadillac, yeah, for the electric car. You know, first it was Timothy Chalamet who played Edgar Scissor Hands, not Edward. It was Ed, Edward's son. The, and then Winona Ryder, who was in the original movie, Edward Scissor Hands, played Edgar's mom. And of course, they everything was a riff off Edward Scissor Hands. So I thought clever, beautifully well done, you know, beautifully, beautifully produced, well cast, obviously cost a fortune. 
But you know what it reminded me of? Remember back in the day when um, VW did the Darth Vader, uh, yeah, the original Darth Vader ad, where the kid turns on the lights of the car, or whatever. Right. The, and, um, and then they tried to get lightning in a bottle the next year by recreating the uh, cantina scene from right. the Star Wars, and it just felt like they spent all this money to duplicate a set, and they and everybody was like, "Wow, it's the cantina set." And it just didn't feel like it really took off because, you know, and I feel that way about this Edward Scissorhands nod because you had to know, like, you had to know the movie, A. B, you had to know that the guy wasn't Edward, but Edgar. <laughs> and you know what I mean? There was there were layers to it that I thought the consumer had to work too hard for. Well, that's so. it's funny you say that because I thought the exact same thing happened with the Tide commercial. I actually mm-hmm. had to explain it to somebody because the, the, the Jason Alexander sweatshirt. The hoodie thing, right? The hoodie. So you know, so it it um so there's a, a Tide commercial and this kid's got the hoodie and the mother says it needs to be washed, and so that's you know were you a Seinfeld fan? Yeah, and she says Jason Alexander needs washing or it needs to get clean and his, and then on the hoodie is a is the Jason Alexander's face, right? Right, and the mute, but the music that was playing. Did you know the layer of that, the significance of the no, music? No, see, see that, and I'm a Seinfeld fan, so what was going on with that? So it's like, yeah, that's believe it or not. Um, yeah, from the greatest American it. hero or something. So that was George's um, answering Theme. machine. <laughs> that was seriously it was, believe it or not. George isn't at home. Da, 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 where could he be? You know, so that was the whole funny thing with George with his answering machine. He would let it go and he would sing to it. And so I tried to explain to somebody, I said, oh, that's kind of funny. But if you didn't know that, so I thought, God, they went they went way out there. And then they showed Jason Alexander in the car, who looked like he had a lot of work done, by the way. Did you notice that? The, Either makeup or something. Yes. And I'll just leave it at that. We said the exact, we, we were, what happened? We're like, what did, it was that the Botox shotgun went crazy yeah. or like something was, yeah. And then there were a couple of other ones that, and you, you might, um, there were a few other ones that made me scratch my head. Klarna. Did you know what Klarna, K-L-A-R-N-A, came in number 53 in the ad meter? I guess it's like an eBay or something or some shopping service. Yes, Bob did pay attention to it. Yeah, he he noted it, but we, well, that was about all we thought about it, yeah. yeah. How about, how about some of the, go ahead, how about some of the no. oak, uh, oat milk stuff? Yeah, that came in actually dead last. Which, there was two brands. There was a Chobani, and then there was the guy, the CEO, who sang the song at the keyboard, almost like Napoleon Dynamite or something. Yeah, the, Oatly uh, was Oatly was that one, one of the ones, and in fact, yeah, Oatly did. Oatly came in the last spot. It was called Wow Wow No Cow. That's it, and you know that yeah, company that, was, that has, came in dead last. They made T-shirts for people to buy that said, "I I hated this Super Bowl spot," you know, <laughs> or something like that. The other ones that made my head scratch. Um, we all we've talked about this on the show at other times. Is that uh, millennials and younger people do not like mayonnaise, and so Hellman's had done Amy a spot. Schumer. Yeah, which came in 46 of the 57 that ran. And she's essentially the the woman with the wings on that was doing the, and I don't even know if she was a celebrity and there was another guy in it. I don't know if they That's were Amy Schumer. Based. That was Amy Schumer who was the angel. Oh, the it wings. was. Yeah. Anyway, she didn't seem to really sell the mayonnaise, mayonnaise though. And then she showed some devil eggs and a few other things. But um, I thought, did not sell mayonnaise to me. No. I mean, not at all. I thought it was a huge misstep, a huge misfire. The other thing that we all scratched our heads about, it came in number 50, was the space mission about civilian space flight. Okay. <clears throat> I... <laughs> but for sure, I'm sure you were paying attention to it, but I thought we were about a small audience. I, I scratched my head. I thought, is this a contest? Is this SpaceX? Is it Blue Origin? You know, like, what, what are we really watching here? And it seems like you could win a seat onto a future mission, right? And you know, another one that came in, I think the top five, was Alexa. See, I don't even remember seeing that one. Well, there's a woman, and she's like, she's talking to some coworkers about this sphere, and she said, this is the perfect vessel for Alexa's voice or whatever, and she looks out the window, and she sees a bus go by, and I don't even remember the uh, tone. Oh, you're right. It came in number three, the Alexa commercial. And I forget it, um, who this star was on the bus, but she imagines him being Alexa, this this really sexy guy. And she'll say, how many uh, ounces are in a cup of water? Well, there are like, you know. <laughs> um, and the extended spot has, it's like anthropomorphization, right? So he's Alexa and um, and she only sees him, whatever. But that was a popular one. And I that's a that's a redo. They've done that with Alexa before. They've had personalities portray Alexa. Yeah. Um, 
what what was like uh, so if you had one through five what was six seven eight and nine of the on the ad yeah, meter on the ad meter so rocket mortgage rocket mortgage one and two was one and two so i don't know how i just don't know how they did that but rocket mortgage was one and two number three was the alexa amazon ad number four was the m&m's ad with the guy from schitt's creek come together Number five was the Toyota ad upstream with the uh, that you and I talked about. Number six was the General Motors ad. We had posted this uh, to our Facebook page. Uh, There's one about Norway being uh, selling more electric cars in the U.S. and yeah. uh, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. People. yeah. Number seven was a Cheetos ad. Oh yeah, that was a weird one. That they was a real. It wasn't me, and I wasn't don't quite me. remember that one. Uh, that was from that '70s show. It had a uh, Mila Kunis. Well, that's right, Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Kutcher. Yeah. yeah. Number eight was the State Farm commercial. Drake from State Farm. Uh that was sort of funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Number nine, I thought of you, Flat Matthew, like the Flatsy doll. So it was Matthew McConaughey, and it was the three D Doritos. That was like in number nine. That was in the first quarter of the game. I remember. I. I I yeah I just and then he expands in the machine yeah uh, okay well I remember it so. I can't get beyond Matthew McConaughey because everybody always says he stinks. <laughs> you never hear that he's a handsome guy but they said he smells. If lives you ever have to work with him he really stinks. Lives in a Those trailer at the beach yeah. They said his feet stinks he's got bo and everything so every time I look at him I think he stinks. Number ten was the Bud Light seltzer lemonade that we liked. Okay. Number eleven was DoorDash. Ten was Jeep. Uh, T-Mobile. Rockstar. I don't know if I remember that one. There are a couple. T-Mobile ran uh, more than one, and I actually enjoyed. They made me laugh, but again, I, it's not going to make me buy T-Mobile. And and ultimately, don't you want the ad to sell the product, right? I hope so. Yeah. Jason Alexander Hoodie was fourteen with Tide. Anheuser Busch, the one we liked, let's grab a beer, was fifteen. Uh, T-Mobile again, but like, let's see. You know, the, another one that made me the Edward Scissorhand ad that you mentioned uh, yeah. was number twenty in the ad meter. Mm. Um, Scott's Miracle Grow, you know, God bless Martha Stewart. She shows up again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you talk about celebrity, and there was E Trade again, Michelob. I'm, I'm going through here to see if there was anything that stood out. You know, the Bass Pro Shop ad, I actually thought was a car ad. Oh, that was to get outside into nature again. And I, and I was thrown until I saw the Bass Pro Shop thing come up. You know, a, right. a, a while ago, you mentioned Mike Wilkie over at, did a piece on queerty.com. Yeah. About, so, he normally looks at LGBT inclusion in um, advertising. Dan Levy appeared in the Super Bowl ad, or the M and M's ad, which I thought was kind of funny. Right. Um, and then little little Nass, little Nass appeared again, and he was for Logitech. In the past, he's been used for different things. The Wayne's World spot, um, I kind of with Cardi B, I thought was amusing, but again, it's just this whole big constant mining of nostalgia to, to get us to some other place but he listed the top five ads lgbt ads of all time for super bowl and one of them is for the toyota camry in 2012 and it was a couch made of men do you remember that one right i remember that one uh, yeah well it's hard to forget that one one of my favorites is the diet pepsi guy watcher and that was See, back, i think i would have picked that as my number one and that was back in the day with carson cressley from queer eye for the straight yep. guy where he does the double take as well there was a Pizza Hut Super Bowl commercial with George Takei uh, from 2017, and then there was. And I, didn't re- I didn't remember that one. Did neither you do I. I had I watched it and I'm like I don't remember this. There was a Dorit. Oh my. Oh oh yeah, because that's what he does. Oh my. There was a little Nas thing, and then there was a Frito Lay Cool Ranch spot with um, uh, Leslie, Leslie Jordan, Jordan surrounded by these two hot guys who are actually twins and these and these women behind them. Um, so that was what Mike was thinking might have been the top five for Super Bowl, but the inclu- LGBT inclusion this year wasn't really notable or huge, but it's there. Um, yeah, so it's just an interesting an interesting year of of game spots, millions of dollars spent. You know, I think of the Fiverr spot. If people, if enough people are saying they really enjoyed that, then that's a brand that's breaking through, right? Yeah. No, I thought yeah, and. Um... And I thought it was a, a surprise, and uh, and I think they they tapped into something that was culturally yeah uh, relevant right away. The other the other thing that um, I I guess I might have felt old, or when you talked about either you're in the know or you're not in the know, I didn't know who her was when she came out to sing "America the Beautiful." <laughs> I also I? didn't know who the weekend was. I mean, I talk about mm. me being stuck somewhere. And then the halftime show, you know, those guys with the jock straps that they wore on their faces, but I guess they were bandages. There was bandages, yeah. On. But I felt a little lost on that, too, yeah. so I don't know. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, there you go. That's our uh, our take on Super Bowl and Super Bowl <laughs> advertising. We have a show to move along, and now it's time for one of our favorite parts. Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings, but the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. John Nash has to keep us on the clock now. Now that we're down on, uh, now that we're on at I uh, have at I have the desert. Out in the Palm desert. Springs. Hello, everybody. So uh, our business birthday today. We're the only show in the universe that does business birthdays. Happy 90th birthday to James Edward West. He's an American inventor and acoustician, if I say it correctly. Nicely said. Um, he's um, and uh, in honor of Black History Month as well. He's African American. He holds over 250 foreign and U.S. patents for the production of microphones. And uh, he actually did the very first patent on the foil electret, electret, I'll say it wrong, microphone. And um, interestingly enough, one of our favorite movies, he's the son of one of the hidden figures, human computers at NASA. Wow, okay. At NASA, <laughs> so, um, so that's, you know, talk about uh, coming full circle. Nearly 90% of the more than 2 billion microphones produced annually are based on the principles and are used every day on the inventions that uh, Mr. West has done in everyday items that we use, such as telephones, camcorders, hearing aids, baby monitors, and all audio recording devices. So needless to say, we would be lost without his inventions. At age 90, he's still a very active inventor, and he's working on a device to detect pneumonia in infants' lungs, and he's just done a study to to see that uh, noise levels in hospitals are actually too high for the staff and the patients. He's won numerous awards, but he said his greatest honor is his four children. So uh, I think he's a, happy, he's a fantastic birthday. business birthday. What a cool guy, right? Yeah. Uh, went to Temple University um, and, uh, as I said, has uh, been honored uh, at the White House and uh, all kinds of degrees. He's also spent an awful lot of time trying to get uh, minorities and people of color involved in STEM. And um, But, gosh, you know, can you imagine, you know, you do something... Um, particularly with microphones and uh, something that we use every day and take and take for granted. So uh, I just think the stat uh, that 90 percent of the world has something yeah. to, that uses microphones has something to do with one of his patents. Amazing. Yeah. Billions and billions. So, hey, everybody, thanks for uh, joining us. Be sure to uh, catch us uh, every week. Find out about us at focusgroupradio.com. All of our media is housed there. Thanks to our friends at Deep Discount. And uh, be sure to head over there as well and start shopping away. Get there at focusgroupradio.com. John, thank you for putting us together each week. Thank you. And uh, and we hope everyone has a good week. Be sure to mask up and be safe. See you on our podcast, TFG Unbuttoned on Tuesday. Take care. It's The Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash. Accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. That was a stunning focus group.